it is great, but sometimes it's good to slow down. Because when you slow down, you can dodge bullets. I've sent this. This is an Insta360 ONE X 360 degree camera. So thank you very much Insta360 for sending me this. This is what that hyperlapse at the beginning of this video was shot on. I shall talk a little bit more about this later on in the video, but it can do a thing called bullet time, where you attach a bit of string and you spin it round your head and it takes a very high frame rate video and you can reconfigure it afterwards to point at you as it's spinning around and it looks like that bit in the Matrix where Neo is being shot at by an agent and he sort of bends backwards and he dodges all the bullets. Of course, the Wachowskis didn't shoot that scene like that. Keanu Reeves wasn't spinning a camera around his own head. They used a clever rig of Canon cameras positioned at intervals all around him and all set off to go one after the other in quick succession. Uh, each becoming one frame of the film. And the Matrix came out in 1999, and I remember it clearly. I was at college at the time, and I remember being in the dark room and talking to someone about the cinematography in it um, while we were developing our shots. And this made me think, because the Matrix coming out in 1999 was shot on film, as all films were then. And of course, the cameras all around the big rig that they invented were also film cameras. They were Canon EOS 5s or A2s, they would have been because they're in America, they have different names. And I've got one here. I picked this one up on eBay for £39. And what's great about the EOS 5 is that it's a film camera, uh, but it can take EF lenses, it's got autofocus, it's got all your usual settings, program, TV, AV, manual mode. You can even set your ISO, I mean obviously the film will have an ISO rating, but you can push or pull the film that way. It's got you know your usual focus points you select in there. You don't even need to wind the film on or anything like that, you just put the film in, it automatically loads it into the camera, automatically advances each frame as you're shooting, and then when the film gets to the end it automatically winds it back and you can take the little canister out and send it off to get developed. There are a load of great film photography channels out there on YouTube. There's Matt Day, his channel's really good. Negative Feedback, that's another good one. Uh, Willem Verbeek is really worth checking out. His channel is uh, very high quality and he does a lot of showcases of artists and stuff. He's really worth subscribing to, go check him out. But one of the things I think that all these film photography channels can have in common is they may seem quite intimidating to people who've only ever shot digitally. And I think the reason for this is because a lot of the processes they show seem very manual. It's all about kind of loading the film, light metering, focusing manually, and there's a lot of developing at home and scanning yourself, and it seems like there's a whole load of stuff to learn. But the process doesn't need to be difficult. The transition can be easy by picking up a camera like the EOS 5. Nikon do one as well. They do the F100 that takes contemporary Nikon lenses because there's not much change from a DSLR to a film camera like this. Because it's not about being a purist, it's about expanding the way you think about photography. Taking a leap and trying film can be a great way to do that. So here are five reasons why you should try film photography. So reason number one, let's start with the most obvious, you get the quality of film. And as good as my film emulation presets are, and they are pretty good, link in the description, they'll never be as good as actual film. Because with film, you get better dynamic range, well, with negative film at least, you get better dynamic range than any contemporary digital camera will give you. With something like Portrait or Ektar, you can overexpose by about six stops and retain good highlight detail. With uh, the Sony a7 III, as good as the dynamic range is, you will blow out your highlights if you try to do that. Reason number two, you are forced to think about your composition a lot more before you take the shot. You've only got a certain number of goes to get it right and every click costs money. You have to really think about the light, really think about your angle. It's very easy with digital to shoot first and think later. With film, you really get to practice the art of visualization and this will really help you become a better photographer. It's a really good exercise. 
Reason number three, you have to be patient. There is no instant gratification with film. You can't just look at the back of the camera. You have to wait for your shots. And that makes it quite exciting. Reason number four, one potentially negative aspect of shooting digitally is that as soon as you've taken the shot, it's very tempting to look down at your camera screen and analyze how your light was, how your composition was, what you need to change, if you're gonna do it again, did you nail focus, all that sort of thing. But what that does is it breaks your connection to the subject, it takes you out of the moment. And of course, with film, you can't do that. You just stay in the moment, you just keep shooting. And this can potentially lead you to have a greater sensitivity towards your subject and therefore create better photos. And so to the fifth and final reason, one of the few good things about the obsession with acquiring new gear is it does temporarily reignite your passion for photography and you want to go out and shoot and try out your new gear. But this can be an expensive pursuit, especially when new cameras come out at two and a half thousand pounds. So picking up a cheap camera body for 39 quid is actually a very cheap way to get yourself in that zone and get out and shoot and try something new and be excited again. Now this is not about film versus digital. Use whatever works for you and don't worry about what other people are doing. There are great photographers out there who shoot on film and there are great photographers out there who shoot on digital. This is about challenging yourself and moving out of your comfort zone a bit. You'll learn something, trust me. So coming back to the Insta360 ONE X, I'm not gonna do a great big technical review on it. There's loads of videos already on YouTube. Philip Bloom did a very good, very in-depth one. Go check that one out. But what I will say about it is on the bad side, the battery doesn't last very long. Uh, it runs out pretty quick. The image quality is not brilliant. Low light is really bad. The sound quality is fairly poor. But I'm not an expert on 360 degree cameras. And as I understand it, this one's actually pretty good for a 360 camera. And while this syncs really nicely with your phone and it's very easy to edit on the phone app, what I don't like is that the desktop applications are much more limited than the mobile applications. And so editing on a desktop is a lot more difficult. But on the plus side, the stabilization this thing is capable of is amazing. You can shake it around all over the place and uh, it can stay pretty damn still. And what's good as well is I mounted it on top of my camera and I got some interesting footage uh, like I would normally mount a GoPro. But what's good about this is if I turn the camera sideways to take a portrait shot, um, the image stays upright. And also I can track a subject round, I can look back at me and look what I'm looking at. You choose the angle of view after you've taken the video. Things like bullet time and all that, and tiny planet and all that stuff this can do, they're fun, but they're a gimmick. But the invisible selfie stick, that's a bit of a game changer. You can get almost drone-like footage with this and it gives the appearance often that the camera is just floating in midair, and that's really quite a nice feature to have. But the thing I love most about this camera is the ability to do those hyperlapses like you saw at the beginning of this video. It really changes how easy hyperlapse is to do because hyperlapse is very time consuming normally. You have to frame each shot, measure the intervals you're moving. With this, because you've got the stabilization and the stick, it just gives really nice hyperlapse footage. Again, it's not sort of broadcast quality professional, but for the money, it's very, very good. And if it's just something to liven up your YouTube videos a bit, I found a lot of use for this already. If this was waterproof like the GoPro is, I'd probably get rid of my GoPro, but it is a lot of fun. And ultimately, that's why we all do photography and video and everything, because we enjoy it, because it's fun.